Hello, my friend. It is Thursday, and it's almost the end of October. I'm Pat Sloan, and we have our topic of the day for my daily video, and a few uh, a sort of spin around the office here, <laughs> spin around the studio, and see what's going on. So let's do let's do the topic first on the uh, the 29th on your calendar. It says pay it forward. So I'm curious if you have ever taught somebody to quilt. You know, it doesn't even have to be a super official, you know, like classroom type of teaching, although that'd be really cool if you've taught in a class. Uh, maybe you've taught in, maybe you are a teacher, uh, like a school teacher, and you've used quilting in your school, or maybe you've taught at the, um, you know, local quilt shop or in your guild, you've taught people, or if you just taught one person, you know, is there somebody who said to you, a friend and a coworker, somebody in your church who said, uh, I would like to learn to quilt. And you were like, come on over, <laughs> I've got fabric. And you just taught them, you taught them to quilt. You made a new friend probably too. Um, you know, my mother-in-law years ago wanted to have a a group of quilters to meet during the day once she retired because she did not want to go to the local guild at night. It was only a night guild. They didn't have any daytime chapter. Although I'm sure they had daytime bees, she just didn't really understand that concept. So she decided instead she would just start her own group at her church and she would have to teach everybody to quilt because nobody apparently quilted. She has a very tiny church, nobody quilted. So she just put up a note and said, and, and told a couple of her friends. So it became this wonderful, wonderful friendship group that still continues on uh, that she started. Uh, and they uh, and she taught them so she taught them how to quilt you know I've taught a lot of people to quilt uh, officially in formal beginner classes and then of course in other kinds of uh, classes I've taught so you know even if you've helped somebody just get through a particular technique or they were stuck trying to read a pattern and you help them understand it uh, all of that is paying it forward you know helping somebody else because I imagine that almost all of us had somebody help us at some point in time where we were stuck on something or we needed to learn something and a friend and be they on the internet, uh, your online friends, like in the group, quote along with Pat Sloan or somebody local to you uh, said, here, I'll show you, come on over. Uh, so I wanna know, I wanna hear about it today. Hear about your paying it forward. Speaking of the calendar, I am, I'm filming this on Wednesday and so I am working on it, working on the calendar and I will give you a little sneak there. See those papers? Yeah. <laughs> My whole back table is filled with papers. So that's how I process things. I have to lay them out and look at them on real paper. Uh, I have a calendar, I have my list of things, I have my list of things for the future, and I have, I tend to muck, muck up my notes a lot during a month where I re re repeat things, you know, I'll like stick it here, stick it here, thinking, you know, whatever, whatever my thought process is. Uh, and so I have to clean it up at least once a month. I don't always get to it that way, but uh, otherwise it's too cluttery and none of it makes any sense anymore. So that's just how my brain works. I'm, I like to overdo everything. That's how I am. I'm, I, uh, I like things to be orderly, but I also have sort of, I guess, an active mind and I just sort of go, ah, get, get it all going. So I'm working on the November one. Uh, and thinking forward to December and January uh, and February for what'll come come along that we're doing because it doesn't just happen. It'll probably take me a good day, maybe day and a half of work uh, to look at the schedule this time since I'm doing the calendar and I'm also sort of doing the schedule for a few months loosely, you know, sort of like plotting out some, some big things. Uh, so that is kind of how I've been spending my time. And I must say that Virginia is, uh, I've got to have my cozy sweatshirt on. You know, you will see my gray sweatshirt a lot because for me being cozy is two layers. I like two layers. And then eventually I'll get my scarves out again because my neck gets chilly. And if my neck is chilly, the rest of me is chilly. So I will, uh, you'll, you know, I don't have hundreds of little sweatshirts so <laughs> it's just the you know, so, and I don't like one layer like some people wear well they'll just wear a shirt with longer sleeves it's like 
no, I need two layers, I need two layers. Even if the bottom layer is short sleeve, I have to have two layers. That's what's cozy for me. Speaking of cozy, are you going through your book? We came out with the next block yesterday. Oh my gosh, I just love that block so much. And the colors that I did it, I wanna make the whole quilt out of that aqua red, white with a splash of black. Just, just perfect, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it'd be so fun. I actually went out and looked to see if I could get that fabric easily. You can hunt it up, but you know, I'm like thinking, no, do I, do I, I don't need it in that exact fabric. But I'm like, oh, but it would be cute in that exact fabric. But then it would be like repeat blocks. So it'd be more, like, more fun to be scrappy. Yeah, my brain is all over the place. Can you tell? Yes, <laughs> because, because I'm working on this. That's why once I get focused in on this, I really don't want to stop but I had to stop and do the video. So you're getting like, whoo, you're getting everything. Uh, so I had somebody ask me about the quilts that the charity quilts that were sent out to Oregon uh, to Heather and her organization. I will link you to her Facebook uh, page down below, um, but she didn't update on October 26, which was just this past Monday where they received 222, they received 2,254 quilts or quilt tops, uh, you know, finished quilts or quilt tops uh, to give to the fire victims to her part of Oregon. And she wrote in that note that they have uh, contacted, because this is more than they need for their community. Uh, so they have contacted other communities so that all of these will go to a person who lost their home in a fire. I mean, imagine that. There's, you, there's 2,254 quilts, and at least that many people have lost their home. Um, you know, I don't know how many homes were lost in those fires or that might still be going on, but you know, sometimes more than one person lives in the home, but uh, you know, that's a lot of people who were all of a sudden, you know, devastated. So we, I thank you for, if you were one of the ones that sent a quilt uh, out to that, um, you know, charity run. So it's great. They are doing a fabulous job because a lot of the quilts came as tops and she accepted tops because she has a strong network of long arm quilters and people to bind the quilts. Because not only do you have to get them long armed by somebody, and I think she had like 20 different people quilting these tops for the charity and then she needed even more people to do binding. Uh, so there's a whole group that's doing the binding and then they have to organize all these quilts. Imagine that many quilts in your home. I mean, I think she's got some special place to store them uh, because that's a lot of quilts. I mean, I know that's like almost three times as many quilts as I own and I know how much space mine takes up. I mean, it would be like a couple of rooms of your house filled with quilts. So that's a huge effort. And she shows a lot of the quilts on her page. So you wanna go over there. And Heather's also a long arm quilter as her business. So if you wanna support her, you can send one of your quilts, your own personal quilts for her to quilt for you and send back. So I want to be sure that she's supported as well for all of her efforts and the whole team that she's working with. Um, so I will send I will send on the point quilting. I think is her business page or her Facebook at Facebook. And if she has a regular business page, I'll hunt that up and I'm sure she does. And I'll link both of those below so you can go out and take a look. Okay, now I decided to get started. Um, um, I haven't. Why? I don't know. But I have not made the the um, blue and white, the red, white, and blue uh, quilt yet. This is the one I'm going to make for the free pattern that goes with Morrison Park. And so what I did is I uh, got it going here, and I want to show you this. Wait, ah, oh, didn't make it all pretty. But let me give me a second. Okay, I think I showed you this the other day. Who knows? Uh, I told you my brain is like, my brain is, is actually still doing the other thing. I just need to do the video. So like, so here we go. So here I've got it all cut up because when you're making this, you're basically cutting loads of squares and then you're cutting some rectangles, big, big, you know, like big rectangles as wide as this and some two and a half inch strips. So you can download the pattern at my website and I wanna show you I've got the blocks going because this is half of the block. So this is like, there's three block layouts and this is half 
of the layout. So I just made one of one of each. So I need to make it goes on the back, you know, reversed, like flipped, so that there would be uh, the red would be down here, and the and the stripe would be over here. So catty corner, and that's what makes up. There's three different ones of those. So there, there's one. Remember, this is still this is just half of the block. This is block two. That's just half of the block. Maybe by tomorrow I'll have uh, three full blocks. And I'll show you again. There's block three. And so uh, you can download that from the fabric page uh, where I show you all the projects for Morrison Park. This is what it is again. And also I put on there from the fabric tour with all of my designer friends, I did a PDF with all of their projects on a page. And you can go and open that PDF and look at it so you can just scroll through and see all of them. Then there's a link to everybody's article that they wrote. Uh, and so you can even print that PDF if you want to have it as an idea and put it with, with your Morrison Park. Um, so that's all now over on my page. That's why when people say, how much do you sew? It's like, well, I'm, I'm running the business part of this. You know, I can spend like maybe an hour sometimes a day sewing, maybe two if I'm lucky. Mostly I'm running all the business side of this. So I had to do all that stuff, had to build all those things and upload it. So I'm really excited though, because the PDF turned out so nice and uh, it really shows everybody's work uh, and, and then you can see it sort of all, all together. I love it. And so that's linked below too. All right, paying it forward. If you are gonna teach somebody, I have a Teach Me book which has uh, nine separate patterns. So there's nine blocks and each of the nine blocks is made into a full project. And then there are, how many is it? 140 plus step out diagrams so that when you're teaching somebody you can actually just take my book and go right through it so if you wanted to make this uh, star and then you can make it actually into a quilt so I've got things like oh, well here's one like a nine patch so that's what's on the cover of the book uh, and uh, there's the stars so, you know, once they make this many stars and you're teaching somebody and then you teach them how to set them together. Uh, this one's nice because the points don't matter. There aren't like points that match each other because it's a friendship star, you know, they're offset. And that's really great for somebody just learning. So they're not so focused on getting those points to touch each other. That's why sashing was invented. <clears throat> so you don't have to have that. <laughs> All right, my friend. I love you. Thank you for using all of my links. Please go see the things that I shared. I'll see you online.